Nintendo's famed mustache mascot has seen an endless array of quality games and huge hits over the decades. He's been the star of some of the most iconic platformers, party games and kart races of all time. There's been no shortage of memorable classics bearing the Mario name, spanning just about every genre imaginable. Yet the pasta-loving plumber has also been part of a handful of stinkers and some more forgettable efforts over the years. Whether they've been bland rehashes, uninteresting concepts or otherwise flawed experiences, Mario has had his fair share of mediocre games attached to his name. Mario games do have a reputation for being both fun and creative, but this hasn't always been the case. Though he hasn't starred in many games as of late, Nintendo's premier mascot has remained just about as popular as ever. This is partly due to the 35th anniversary of Mario just a couple of years ago, in which Nintendo helped by celebrating and releasing a new collection of 3D Mario classics such as Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Through a remaster and added content of Super Mario 3D World, along with memorable new entries in the Mario Golf and Paper Mario series also contribute. With this in mind and the fact that there remains a handful of mediocre Mario games yet untouched, it seems very fitting to refresh this list with more of the worst Mario games. This list will dive through the archives of Metacritics and will take a look at the top 15 worst outings in his decades long history run as a gaming icon. Just before we do get into the video, if you do enjoy this type of content, be sure to hit the subscribe button and of course, like the video. We also do stream over on Twitch. I will leave all the links within the description box below. And with all that said, let's get into our list. Number 15, Mario Party 10. While the Switch's Super Mario Party thrives with its appealing rework, the series was arguably in need of a facelift during the Wii U era a few years prior. Enter this rendition from 2015, an effort that didn't really achieve much other than bring back some of the most unpopular mini-stars and single vehicle transportations in board games. For most fans, the one notable addition was the new Bowser Party, which did make use of the Uni gamepad by having a player control Bowser while being against four other players. Though some fans and critiques enjoyed this new fun twist, many he felt that it was a cheap way to shoehorn the gamepad features into a Mario Party experience. Then there were some of the more traditional minigames, which tended to be a mixed bag of mostly simple showdowns. Number 14, Mario and Sonic at the London Olympic Games. This collection of Olympic minigames tends to be uplifted by the name recognition of Sonic and Mario which back in 2011 was still a somewhat fun and fresh novelty. This sports party game received some praise for its dynamic creative use of the motion control and the uses of characters as well as the events. Still many also criticised it for being somewhat bland, having shallow gameplay and an experience that felt more like a step down from its 2007 predecessor. This is despite the inclusion of new sports like soccer which did add a little wow to most players. Number 13, New Play Control Mario Power Tennis. It's fair to say that the original from which this Wii reworking is derived is one of the stronger entries of the Mario Tennis franchise. Yet judging the merits of this specifically, Mario Power Tennis failed to hit its mark. Its tracked on Wii motion control wasn't enough to warrant the fairly high price or repurchase for most. Amidst the fun tennis gameplay lies a feeling of unrealized potential with what amounts to a glorified game port. If anything, it tends to be a small step back. Not only have some games reported spotty, fairly inaccurate motion, but certain elements are also watered down here to accommodate the Wii controls. Number 12, Mario Party 7. Though this late addition to the GameCube's library certainly does have its following, Hudson Soft's 7th Mario Party effort managed to feel lukewarm for many. It didn't help that one of its few notable highlights was a series of mostly shallow, convoluted microphone controlled romps. It also played with the concept of teams of sharing a controller, a feature that sounds more interesting in theory than in practice. Mario Party 7 certainly delivers in terms of quantity, featuring a whopping 88 minigames, none of which are remakes from previous games. Number 11, Mario Sports Mix. In an odd diversion from their usual material, Nintendo tapped Square Enix to handle this medley of Mario Sports, rather than opting for Camelot or Hudson Soft. But while Square Enix may be practiced in the art of RPGs, most would agree that this talent didn't quite translate into the party sports title. Even the amusing guest appearance from some of the staple Square Enix characters weren't enough to make this game better. Much of the same arcade style gameplay from typical Mario Sports games are here to a degree, which some critics and fans praise for their multiplayer fun. Still, some pointed to the lack of available sports, only four in this case, simple AI and tedious, shallow experiences that compromise most games. This is especially the case for the watered down version of the volleyball offered. Number 10, Mario Pinball Land. 
It's perhaps not too easy crafting an interest in pinball video games or generating much excitement for one when the real thing offers so much more, even one bearing the Mario brand. Regardless, the few that played it mostly found Mario Pinball Land for Game Boy Advance to be a bland, wonky virtual pinball experience. Outside of its decent graphics and overall presentation, for most Game Boy Advance standards, players struggled to find much of interest here. The gameplay mostly proved repetitive, and the pinball machine stages felt static and empty. Number 9, Mario Sports Superstars. Mario Sports Superstars is a reaffirmation that quality tends to reside over sheer quantity. This bundle of amusing sport titles here does contain a well-rounded list of football, baseball, tennis and golf, though the inclusion of horse racing is a little bit of a head stretcher. Still, despite this enticing lineup, many who played the game felt that it didn't particularly do any of these very well at all. While most were suitable enough, they tended to try and take on a cheap and shallow feel more often than not. Most quickly realized that they were better off sticking to the superior Mario Tennis or even Super Mario Sluggers. Number 8, Mario Party 8. One could say that this was a major shift from the GameCube to the Wii, and the then new concept of motion controls would make Mario Party 8 an enthralling party game. While fans and critics generally approved of this one, it never felt quite as fun or as exciting as the innovative control inputs might have led fans to believe. Most of the minigames that are fun aren't even really a result of motion enhancements, and those that do use the functionality tend to feel like an afterthought. Many of these boil down to simply shaking, waggling or even briefly pointing the Wii Remote on screen, and despite being over a decade old now, the lack of online support here is a questionable decision by Nintendo. Number 7, Mario & Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. By 2016, the novelty of having two of the biggest gaming mascots, the once rivals Mario and Sonic, together on a frenzied party game had somewhat lost its appeal. Thus, all gamers were left with was a cheap feeling compilation of simple minigames and sporting events meant to resemble those at the Olympics. Some of the game choices here are questionable, like the decision to include horse riding events as opposed to, say, basketball. The controls can feel interesting and comfortable to use when players get the hang of them, but the varying motion controls and timing required for each game can be rather jarring. Number 6, Mario Kart Tour. Nintendo's base mobile titles have proven to be a bit of a mixed bag since the release of Mii Tomo in 2016. On the one hand, there's the entertaining phenomenon that is Pokemon Go or the charming Super Mario Run. On the other hand, there's the fairly watered down and wonky version of Mario Kart. As this is played on a more limited mobile device, rather than a control tethered to be a home console, one would expect some level of simplicity. Yet Mario Kart World Tour still largely feels like a missed opportunity, especially given the amount of small tracks and short races that compromise the game. Number 5, Mario Party, the top 100. On one hand, it's really great to get a sizable compilation of the apparent 100 best Mario Party minigames from the home console titles. On the other hand, the criteria of what qualifies this subjective notion is never quite explained. There are some head-scratching inclusions, like a few of the silly microphone games from the GameCube entries, no doubt meant to show off the mic capabilities of the 3DS. While most of the minigames prove fun on one level or another, there is a looser, cheaper feel to some of them, and although players can take advantage of local or download play to engage in some multiplayer fun, there's still a notable lack of online play. Number 4, Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. In a likely attempt by Nintendo to keep this pretty straightforward tennis experience feeling fresh, they opted to largely revolve the Wii U rendition around the weird, imbalanced concept of oversized players. This feature could be achieved through nabbing a Mega Mushroom randomly tossed onto the tennis court. While it is an interesting idea, it usually just disrupts the match more than it adds to it. Not only this, but the online mode was limited with lack of substance, and the single player options were some of the weakest in the series. Areas that would be thankfully rectified by Switch's Mario Tennis Aces. Number 3, Mario Party Island Tour. As is the case with many examples, Mario Party Island Tour isn't necessarily a bad experience, but many regard it as feeling rather basic and doing little to stand out, especially compared to the far stronger entries in the series. This selection of minigames is tepid, and the board games are some of the least interesting in the Mario Party franchise. Critics and fans have pointed to their heavy emphasis of random chance rather than skill or tactics. Again, the game mainly suffers from the lack of multiplayer emphasis, which is where the franchise generally excels. Online play is also disappointingly missing, despite this being a 2013-2014 release. Number 2, Mario & Sonic at the Sochi 2014 Olympic Winter Games. 
In yet another case of quantity over quality, this is but another example of a long list of Mario and Sonic games, with this iteration proving quite forgettable to most. This is despite the implementation of 10 major sporting events, with a handful more including subdivisions within some of them. While one would expect for a colourful Mario sports game, most of the efforts included are particularly cartoony and repetitive, often leaning on basic motion controls, which diminishes the fun. Many of the events are over too quickly, and offer too few scenarios, tracks or customizations. Aside from the hockey event, there are few games that offer real substance or lasting enjoyment. Number 1. Mario Party Advance and finally at number 1, the first ever iteration of a handheld version of Mario Party. It is tempting to cut this often forgotten Mario game some slack, simply for being the first of its kind. Still ultimately, a bland game is a bland game, and this one wasn't exactly ancient considering its release in 2005. Of course the basic visuals tend to go with the territory when it comes to the Game Boy Advance, but regardless the flat cartoony graphics tended to make much of this experience feeling limited and cheap. The game very much stresses luck, along with rather shallow gameplay and particularly brief brief minigames. Mario Party Advance also makes a strange attempt to feel a little bit like an RPG with its quest system, but mostly falls flat. At least according to Metacritic, it currently stands as the worst Mario game. And so there you pretty much have it, that was my top 15 list of the current worst Super Mario games that Nintendo have released. If you don't agree with the list or you feel that there is a Mario game missing from this list, be sure to let me know in the comment section below, I would love to hear your opinions and thoughts. That said, if you do like this type of content and you would like to see more top 10 videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button and of course, like the video. If you would like to check out some more top 10 videos, I will leave some more videos at the end of this video in the annotations. Thanks very much for watching everyone and I will see you all next time.